So we will start with the first item on the agenda is under new business item A, the established a public hearing date for resolution 2013-55 extending the medical marijuana moratorium. Uh, Would you like to sure. staff, quick staff report? Yeah. <laughs> aware um, the uh, medical marijuana moratorium that was put into place in February of 2013 is uh, due to expire um, on August 25th, which is coming up soon. And um, so it behooves us to revisit the moratorium. Um, every time a moratorium is extended, uh, either the planning commission and or council has to have a public hearing to take input before um, contemplating further extension. And this resolution is a resolution that, is, um, that uh, places August 12, 2013 as the day of a public hearing and a potentially adoption by the, the City Council of an extension of the moratorium. I don't know if anyone else wants to discuss why, <laughs> but I think that can happen at the public hearing. I move to set August 12th as the date for the public hearing on resolution uh, 2013 as you will be. Need to do it or the moratorium expires without uh, anything to replace? <coughs> Any other comments from Council? Comments from the audience? All those in favor of um, setting the public hearing date for August 12, 2013, I guess we should do a roll call of this resolution 2013-055. Roll call count, please. John Jones. Aye. John Sutton. Aye. Gary Holby. Aye. Clint Steiger. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is establish the public hearing date for the right-of-way condemnation resolution 2013-056. And a brief staff report. Certainly, as many of you are also aware, the uh, Valentine Avenue project has been um, in in some stages of planning and execution since 1999. Uh, it's now in the right of way acquisition phase. Uh, the City of Pacific has designated the City of Sumner as the lead agency on this joint project. Um, but to continue moving forward on the project to meet deadlines may be necessary to proceed to condemnation on some of the right of way for this roadway in order to get it built. Uh, staff recommends that, that council approve resolution number 2013-056. Um, it's a resolution of the City of Pacific setting the date of August 12, 2013 for a public hearing on the matter of right of way condemnation for the Valentine Avenue Road project. Budget impact is cost of, of right of way, which will come from the Valentine Avenue Road Improvement Fund. Al alternatives and unrecommended. And attached is the resolution number 2013-056, which sets the public hearing for August 12th. Thank you. I move to set uh, August 12th as the uh, public hearing date for resolution 2013-056. Second. Councilman Holtzy, would you like to speak on your motion? Yeah, there's several uh, property owners that have not responded yet on the uh, right-of-way uh, request, and uh, we need to proceed with the condemnation, or oftentimes uh, condemnation proceedings <coughs> on the ball and have them respond, and so that we can acquire the right-of-way. Councilman Jones. Um, the project uh, is moving forward. We need to make sure that we're on on target and on schedule that, so that uh, we maintain the requirements that the state requires us to meet. So I think that's the next best thing. Next step we need to take. Any other comments from council? Comments from the audience? Was, was there any... Uh, Could you come up to the podium, oh, please? Yeah. Excuse me. Sorry. Thank you. 
your name and record, tell your address for the record. It's Suki, 133 Park Avenue Southwest. My question is, I noticed that on the Valentine Project up here, where the new homes were, it was widened, and that the homes that are on the south there all have underground uh, uh, wiring and utilities. My question is, did somebody consider putting the telephone poles and all that power underground so that, number one, you don't have a problem with trucks hitting it, and number two, so you update to go the way that you've updated the rest of the city on the new projects? I appreciate your comment. That's not on the motion that's before us. Okay. Well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Any other public comment? So a roll call of council of resolution 2013-056 establishing the public hearing date for August 12, 2013. John Jones? Aye. Josh Putnam? Aye. Gary Halsey? Aye. Ted Steiger? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is approving a hiring, hiring a part-time engineer. And that is something that I'm bringing forward. I passed out to staff um, a letter that I received. And one of the reasons I feel that we need to move forward on this is I received an email last Monday that some of our projects are, um, they may be going to King County Risk Management for lack of reporting. So I'm holding that off and I've been able to work with them. And we, um, one of the things that was creating an issue was um, they had absolutely no insurance information that they had been requesting since January. So I got the two people talking and was able to hold that off and there's concern about the reporting that need to be done on some of our grants. Um, uh, my recommendation that I was bringing forward to council is um, James Morgan, who's worked for the city before as an engineer, um, who would charge us considerably less than what we are paying now, but he's very much aware of all the projects. It would be a timely matter to get caught up to speed. Everything can be checked on, and there's a couple projects I'm a little concerned or where we are financially and what we'd be in charge, and he knows the projects well enough. I think it's somebody that we wouldn't have to do a lot of training and a lot of... Um, it would just be a lot faster. <coughs> so I was hoping to get a motion from council to move forward to bring him on a part-time basis, about 20 hours a week, on a kind of like an as-needed, first go through audit our public, public work jobs, no more than 20 hours a week at $50 an hour until we get caught up and um, have a better, um, what do I want to say, structure of what we're going to do in the organization in the public work department. Second. Yeah, Jim Morgan is a, a good engineer. He's familiar with the project. We need to start cutting some of our unnecessary costs and uh, redundant engineering costs and keep the project moving. I think Jim would be a, an excellent choice to bring back to the on-part day basis. If we're bringing him on as an employee, does this require a budget adjustment since he's not currently an FDE position on the approved list? Correct. We would have to do that. That's why I'd like council's um, approval to move forward with that. And once we get a budget, <laughs> we can make that budget amendment. Okay. Um, in the leading letter, it talks about three cases of three different pay scales based upon how we were going to hire them. So uh, will we have a more secure contractual arrangement once we decide to only to bring him on? Um, my proposal is to move forward with his alternate pro proposal, the second paragraph there, where we would just pay his taxes. There are no health care benefits, um, no sick leave, none of that. Okay, just so pay that's so the $50? Correct. Okay. Correct. And that is what I'd like to move forward. That's my proposal. Yes, and exactly what's written in the in the copy. A part time employee of the city. Basically, so yeah, he's just a part time employee. So we would be uh, responsible for the matching social security funds and his wife Fernandez. In tax, yeah. And tax. Yeah. Any other questions from council? Council questions from the audience? Gene Fancher, 37248 55th Avenue South. I think uh, you can't do that unless you advertise the position 
uh, but you can put him on as a what is it, a services contract rather than calling it a full-time equivalent. It's not a full-time position and it's not a permanent position, it's just a part-time to get us through this. It's almost like an interim position just to get us through this. So it's not a full-time position and it's not a permanent position. It's just 20 hours a week, it's just cleaned up. I think that's called a contract, services contract. Just to make sure every, you know, we've had issues with employees and union and lawsuits. so. I mean, I worked for the city on a services contract for a flat fee, a certain number of hours, and paid my own social security, and there was with no withholding. But I think the wording is kind of important. You might consult your personnel person. <laughs> well, it would be my recommendation that council change the language to read the emergency contract
an alcohol test, and I don't know if... Uh, that's not, it's budgeted in their contract, and they don't have to have a CDL, and that's not um, negotiated into their contract at this time. We could probably put it in the into the job description, but it's not a part of the, the no. negotiated contract. It's a concern I have. I find totally with you on that. The citizens around to make sure that we're protecting ourselves. Especially well, we do a background check, so. But I mean, I mean, that's what we can do. I, I just would like to ask that should you put the valid Washington driver's license in there? Oh, that is in there. I thought it was. Yeah. Third the, bullet under knowledge. The, the last one that has disaster preparedness training. Is there a level they have to achieve the courses they have to take? I think it would be what the staff normally receive. Yeah, we have some level specified in the emergency management plan. Any other questions from council? Okay, council. Questions from the audience? Okay, any other questions from council? Okay, we'll call the council on approving the job description. John Jones? Aye. Josh Bettman? Aye. Gary Halsey? Aye. Rick Steiger? Aye. Okay, motion carried. So, and then the next one is approval because it is not a budgeted position on our budget. I would like to post this position so that we could hire somebody for it for a part time position. And so we had originally talked about on the budget draft, I don't remember what it was, but it's like the very first range A, very first step that that person would start at. Step one, range A. You move to approve hiring? I second that, but I want to amend the motion. Okay. I move to allow the budget and allow the staffing level because hiring is an administrative function and that's your job. Just want to post it. And I still move. Okay. All right. Councilman Peckin. Yeah. Um, actually, that was so good to bring up as my first discussion question is uh, this would need to be added to the FD schedule in the budget, which we have to do by ordinance. Uh, so we can post it now, but can we actually <coughs> finish the hiring process before that change is made to the FD schedule? In my intent is just to get the ball rolling. Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure we don't get ahead of ourselves and put somebody else in position. Appreciate that. <laughs> 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 uh, did you second the amendment? I did. Okay. Um, like I said before, we can't approve the hiring, but we can approve the staffing level. So the hiring is up to you, Madam Mayor. Okay. So all in favor of the amendment of the motion to approve the posting of the job? Aye. 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 All right. Okay. Now, going back to the motion, the motion of posting the job. As, so amended. as amended. Thank you. All those in favor? Or do you want, we'll do a roll call. Go ahead and do a roll call. Oh yeah, audience comment on that? Okay, here we go. John, no comment? There we go. John Jones? Aye. Josh Cutler? Aye. Gary Holtby? Aye. Ms. Steiger? Aye. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, Councilman Holtby, Mr. Dimension. Uh, actually, when we amended the um, agenda, that was items A through E. F and G will come before the consent agenda. So go back to our regular schedule now. Okay. Turn up the order he did. <laughs> so, all right, then we will go back up to the top of the schedule and move through the items that we needed council approval and vote on. Next item up is council 
for audience comment. Catherine Holt. I have two things to talk about tonight. The first one being, Jane, yes. We have set the voters form for the general election. It will be October 22nd in the gym. The form will be hosted by the Auburn Reporter, and they will be providing the moderator. We're just providing the cookies, although we're trying to get them to pay for that too. Uh, Sorry. October 22nd, it's a Tuesday. Be the fourth, I think the fourth Tuesday of the month. It's the fourth, fourth Tuesday of the month. There is a small conflict with the Planning Commission, which also meets on the fourth Tuesday of the month, but I believe they meet at 6 o'clock. And we're hoping that uh, they will be able to conclude their business and come over to the gym uh, by 7.30. We'll have the 7.15 to 7.30 kind of meet and greet, mingle with the candidates. Um, we expect to have candidates for the three positions that are on the ballot, or four? Four. Four. So, yeah. Lots. Lots. And um, the, ball the ballots will probably be mailed that week before, so we expect that we're going to do some advertising, some promotion beforehand, so people take time to come to the forum uh, before they mark their ballots. Um, about the Auburn Reporter, they're going to provide a banner and they're going to pay for the rental of the gym. We have the insurance certificate for, uh, and we'll cover the deposit, the damage deposit. What else? And the second thing I want to talk about is Make a Difference Day, October 26th. So, Make a Difference Day is about helping your community. So I would like to ask for your assistance in determining who in our community needs a little extra help that day. Do they need something painted? Do they need their deck redone? And I also would like to ask if we can put something in the utility bill for wider circulation in order to find people, find people need who help. need some yeah. help. Uh, we already have our first. Um, the Terry home has graciously said that we can clean their body garden for them. <laughs> so we're looking for some more people who would like us to help out. Thank you so much. Oh, Kate Hall, 102, Alder Lane South. Kate Banter, 372 55th Avenue South. By the way, as you're driving around, you might notice a house or two that's uh, covered in blackberries. Things were cut down a couple of years ago, maybe, and they've grown up again. Those are the kind of projects we're looking for. Something that motivates people to get out and help each other, improves the appearance of the community, and improves the morale of the community. This is the Park Boards Group uh, way of giving back to the community that has helped us help the Park Board, Friends of the Lower White River, and the city on various park cleanup and planting days. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, Warren Williams. <coughs> First of all, I want to welcome the new mayor. My name is Warren Williams. I live at uh, 203rd Avenue Southwest in Pacific. And uh, this is something that's not, I don't think, new business. Uh, for years I've been coming here with the past mayor in reference to what's going on, in reference to our speed limit going up and down 3rd Avenue. Okay, nothing's been done about it. I think I spoke to Sergeant Matthew a few times about it, and I can understand the limitations the guys have, you know, and I do my heart goes out there. But what we have is a major problem. My neighbor next door, my house, and the house next door for that, their windows are all cracked. My house got new roofs, three leaks. The next house to me, from the corner, brand new roof, 
He put a brand new roof before he went to Afghanistan. It's leaking. All over down, same as my living room. Walls are ruined. And it's because of the intersection of 3rd and Chicago. And what's going on, the speed limit of these big trucks that go by, okay, the, the water level is about two feet down, okay? And it's shaking everything. If I had a, what you call, I don't know what they call them, a, a rectal scale for Size earthquakes, <laughs> if I had one of them, I think it would be a reading about two every time these trucks go by. A lot of them now, and uh, they've increased their speed limit. The UPS trucks have increased their speed limit. The uh, router company has increased their speed limit. They got big trucks, and they hit the they hit that uh, what you call manhole cover, which is raised two or three inches above the normal level of the road. Okay, uh, something definitely has to be done from West Valley Highway. To Chicago, there's 18 ruts. They're almost like speed bumps. I don't know if you noticed, anybody noticed it. But still, in all, we've got these trucks that are over speed. I understand we've got to have the trucks going up and down. It's got to be. But somebody has to watch the speed. I don't know what can be done. That's all I know our houses are dropping, are falling apart. And I've got a lot of money invested in mine. You guys know where I live. And it, it, it's not right. Okay? And uh, I don't know what can be done, to be honest with you. So, uh, speed limit is the big thing, and nobody's, nobody's paying any attention to it. These guys out there. I think it's a new thing, I don't know. <laughs> That's all i got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Suki. Dave Suki, 133, 4th Avenue Southwest. Uh, I'm here to uh, question the council's uh, misuse of funds. And, uh, talking about the, in March, you had a Tie uh, vote on the council and refuse to let the mayor make a break, break it, which is per RCW 35A 12.100. He spent almost $2,500 to Mr. Luce trying to circumvent the law. And uh, I think that I have a hard time gathering up the extra $2,500 to put in my pocket. But I think it's time that we're much more cautious in how we spend our money. Uh, everybody in here is uh, worried about spending money. And it's important that you be aware of what you're spending it for. You need to ask for the invoices, which I did on Mr. Luce, and I just quoted about one day. And I think it's time you take, take a good look at what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Next on my list is the mayor's report. And so I'll make it short and brief. First of all, I want to start off by saying that um, my first day in office is we hired the two police officers, so we got that FT goes back in place. Um, they started on July 16th, and the officers were sworn in on July 17th. I would like to um, talk about Pacific Days as well. I think it was a very successful event, and I want to thank the partnerships Civic Partnerships, the Park Board, and the White River Valley Lions for all of their hard work and dedication. And um, I think they deserve a round of applause for putting out this. <laughs> so, and also, I would like to thank Valley Regional Fire Authority for the use of the real fire truck and to uh, allow the new mayor and the council members to ride in together. I thought that made a great statement, so I appreciate that as well. Um, as the status of where we are right now, tomorrow I will be interviewing for um, a, a temp finance director. That's a, another thing that we want to be looking at is bringing somebody in. We have um, a serious issue, I think you know, with the budget, bringing somebody in and getting all that resolved. Um, they, uh, uh, 
um, I'm sorry. The interlocal agreements that we tried to work with with Auburn is much work that needs to be done. They don't have the staffing level to bring somebody in, so we've had to reach out and try to bring somebody in. I've reached out to a couple different um, temp agencies, and one of those temp agencies said that's going to cost us $70 <coughs> an hour, and I did a little bit more research in another temp agency. We're possibly looking at um, about $59 an hour. And so they're sending a couple people in tomorrow to, to um, interview with and see if there's not something that we can do. And then also we'll be reposting the city position as well. Um, the posting of the council vacancy position the is posted. The applications are coming in. As last I checked, we have five applications as of today for that seat that will be closing on October um, October 2nd, council will be reviewing along with myself on October 5th and hopefully making a selection with down to three to vote on on October 12th to fill that position. October so or August? Uh, August, 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 August 12th, sorry. Um, I also attended a ribbon cutting ceremony at Quality Inn, it's formerly called the King Oscar and now it is now the Quality Inn so that was kind of fun. I was invited by the Auburn Regional or Auburn Chamber of Commerce. And so um, now they are now the quality in, and they look forward to working with the City of Pacific. Um, the conference room has now opened up. It's no longer <coughs> considered anything else but a conference room and is open and available to staff to use as a conference room or to go in and take their lunch break or just get away and have a, an opportunity to sit down. I've been working with um, Auburn IT. I've been asking them questions about how we can get Channel 21 up and running again, and they've been talking with Comcast to see if maybe we can't get some um, almost upgraded equipment, but it's still hand-me-down equipment, <laughs> you know, to kind of at least get back online the system that we have now and the software that we have now is not a function. It's too old, it's obsolete, and we can't seem to get it working. So. Um, Comcast, when they upgrade other people, <laughs> they get the other stuff back to older versions, so we wouldn't have top of the line, but at least we might be have an opportunity to get something to get that up and running and functioning again. And so, and also working with ADA compliance here in the room, so looking at uh, finding a sound system that we can have in here that hearing aids will be able to pick up, kind of like we talked about the loop system and microphones for everybody here at the dais. So those are some things that I've been looking at and working on. So with that, that concludes my report.